Welcome back. This next story is for members of Congress from both parties. In case any of you are watching, we hate to inform you, but you've got some haters in America. The latest Associated Press poll shows only 22% of Americans approve of Congress, which comes in light of the unemployment rate and ongoing health care debate. And this poll shows no mercy by the people because it targets Republicans and Democrats and ultimately shows that a half of the U.S. population wants to fire their lawmaker. On the other hand, President Obama's numbers are looking stronger. The people believe he's done a decent job with the wars abroad and keeping ahead of the terrorism problems plaguing the country. It makes sense that Obama's job performance approval is holding steady at 53 percent, and half the people who took the AP poll say the president still has their support. So perhaps members of Congress should listen up, because they might need to change their strategy when it comes to passing bills and communicating with the American people, because at this rate, a good portion of congressmen won't have that seat for the next term, which leads us right into our next story. As Democrats are desperately trying to salvage their image with the American people. Harry Reid today announced he would be taking a serious look at ending the filibuster in the Senate. He criticized the Republicans for abusing the procedural motion and stalling everything and anything that they possibly can. But Democrats have used the filibuster in the past as well, so, you know, they've been the culprit too. So is this just a cosmetic procedure, or will it really break the gridlock that has caused Americans to lose faith in their government? Here to discuss it, I have a panel, Jake Brewer, the campaign director for the Sunlight Foundation, which works to promote government transparency and accountability, and radio host Tom Hartman rejoins us. Gentlemen, Americans are unhappy with the federal government. It's, you know, we heard the numbers, they're staggering, and not surprising, Congress has some of the lowest ratings in history. Is the filibuster reform the answer? Let's start with you, Jake. Well, I won't say that filibuster reform for sure is the answer, but I think it's a, an extremely healthy thing to look at the process. Uh, right now, I mean, the, the fundamental problem with the filibuster is that it's completely disconnected from the American public. You have a situation where uh, <laughs> a filibuster is really uh, a decision between whether debate will go on or whether you will uh, use cloture to stop that debate. And so... Instead of debating the issues right now, we're really talking about whether we should allow filibusters to happen or, or have cloture. And so if the American public really wants to have a debate between filibustering and cloture, great. The Senate should continue with that. But my guess is they'd rather talk about more important issues. <laughs> what do you think? What's your take, Tom? Well, it, to boil it down, the, what the filibuster does is it allows a minority in the Senate to basically blow up the Senate, to, to force delays anywhere from, from 30 hours to forever. And up until two months ago, I was totally in favor of blowing up the filibuster of the nuclear option, doing away with it, and simply saying the Senate should be majority rules. A month and a half ago, or thereabouts, the Supreme Court in the Citizens United case said corporations can now rain unlimited amounts of money, even foreign money, into, into political campaigns. They can pick and choose the candidates that they're going to elevate or destroy. So now... Having the filibuster in place where a small minority of senators can block the majority of senators from doing something might be the only thing, if there is a real major corporate takeover of America as a result, uh, and we're already seeing the Chamber of Commerce has already, has already created a phony AstroTurf gra grassroots organization. They've already got six million Americans signed up for this thing. They're getting ready to drop hundreds of millions of dollars in our political process. I'm now completely on the other side of this thinking, I want the filibuster there because I want to be able to stop the Republicans when this machine starts. But Democrats have used the filibuster. I mean, it can go both ways. The Democrats have used the filibuster historically, so have Republicans. The Democrats have never abused the filibuster the way Republicans are right now. The Republicans, they're, 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 if you look at the chart of filibusters over the last 70 years or so, it looks just like this. I mean, just the last two years, bang, right off the chart. So the Democrats now are are saying everything is being filibustered, and so we have to blow it up. In fact, I was in a meeting today that Harry Reid was in and Chuck Schumer was in where I heard these guys say that they were, gonna t they were seriously considering reexamining the rules, the filibuster rules, at the beginning of the next session, which is when you change the rules. <clears throat> I think the Republicans are putting them in a corner by saying no constantly so that they'll blow up the filibuster so that after the next election, when the Republicans take control, they don't have to worry about the Democrats anymore. Hmm. Do you agree? Um, I think that's a really interesting perspective. The, the use of the filibuster is actually not 
all that common in, for major debate. It's actually the threat of the filibuster that's actually much more uh, useful. And really, again, at this point, we're talking about um, can you pass a policy uh, with, with a basic majority? And right now, the answer is no because of the threat of a filibuster. And so reexamining that, I think, uh, is, is a very useful thing to do. I wouldn't say that getting rid of it altogether uh, is necessarily the answer. Um, but, you know, the, the House of Representatives has had reasonable rules about uh, limiting debate since 1842. Now, you might not think the House of Representatives is all that reasonable, but the, but the rules limiting debate are pretty reasonable. And I think there's some, some other options besides uh, the filibuster for how to make sure that that useful debate happens that is in the best interest of the American public. But it used to be, if, if, yeah, if I may, ahead, ahead. It, it used to be that the the final arbiter, the blocking point, you know, if, if that useful debate turned into insane debate and that insane debate turned into creating insane laws in the <clears throat> House and the Senate, right. and those laws actually got passed and the president signed them, and we've seen that happen a few times over the years, going back to from slavery to, to George W. Bush torturing people and starting wars. <laughs> Ultimately, the final block on that is the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court ruled three different times, you know, the Hamden case, for example, three different times against the Bush administration on the war and on torture. So the Supreme Court was traditionally the final block. Now the Supreme Court has gone nuts, right? It's been taken over by five right-wing crazies, and they just declared, this is, and I'm, I'm serious, the citizens Some say that won't have that big of an effect, though. Some say that it's, it already you know, has. all, what, what, in what way? Well, look, the, at the same time, though, we're talking about the Supreme Court, we're talking about justice up there, we're talking about the United States Senate. These people's jobs is to create a system that serves the American public. That is why they're up there in the first place. And right now, you've got an instrument that is dictating our legislative process. It's very blunt. Uh, and we're not using, I, I think we agree very much that ultimately we want something that's going to serve the public the best. Um, and whether or not that's with a filibuster, I think is uh, still the question. I, I don't think it's a very good, useful tool. Um, and I wouldn't say that we want to keep it around just in case we may need it later, uh, as you said, in the case of responding to Citizens United. I think there's probably other more useful ways to respond to Citizens United, which could include better disclosure. Um, I think you know, one of the things the Supreme Court case said in Citizens United is that you know, if free speech equals money, we're going to allow for lots and lots of free speech. But we also want lots and lots of disclosure. And so uh, I think there's other solutions uh, using technology to actually make sure the public knows who is influencing whom. Um, those are some other options, too, that, that may uh, allow for debate to be a little bit more in tune with what the public wants rather than just some... You know, 60 to 100 folks up Except on Capitol Hill. that the largest <laughs> lobbying firm in Washington has already issued a paper for corporations on how to avoid the disclosure rules in Citizens United. You know, citizens <laughs> right. in, in, in 1857, I think it was. There's also papers in, in response to that, too. Yeah, so but, but so I, a lot you know, of times just that back and forth. But, but again, the, the laws are increasingly being made by corporations. In 1857 in Dred Scott, the, court, the, the Supreme Court ruled that people are property. Now the <clears> Supreme Court has ruled that property is people. They're both crazy decisions <laughs> in both cases. And in both cases, you know, the court was supposed to be the final thing to save the republic. And in both cases, the court failed. So now it's going to fall to the legislature to save the republic. And I'm really concerned that a majority rules legislature, the Senate, without a filibuster, may not be strong enough to do it. I think it's a valid concern. I just wouldn't necessarily agree that the filibuster is the thing to, to, to yeah. ultimately be the arbiter. In well, if you, if you can come up with a better one, I'd, I'm all for it. You well, guys, that's, maybe the, the debate obvious, should be that we should think, think about that. Yeah. I hate to say it's obvious, but do you think filibuster reform will just get filibustered? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it, it actually, when, when the Senate resets itself every two years, when the new session yeah. starts, yeah. it only takes 50 votes to change yeah. the rules. So you could do away with the you filibuster. You can't filibuster the filibuster at certain times. Yeah. <laughs> so it's Just all about time. timing. It's all about it's, the timing. It's what and it all that's, boils what down to. that's what Harry Reid was talking about. Uh, so it would not ultimately, well, who knows, would not ultimately have an impact on a lot of the issues we're debating right now, such as health care or energy. Uh, it really would be at the beginning of the next Congress starting in January of next year. Right. Okay. Well, regardless of what happens, if this is some kind of PR, would be some PR victory for the Democrats. I don't know how interesting it is to the average person who can't understand, but really the nuts and bolts Mom, of it. But you thank, care you about for, this? Yeah. thank you for, thank uh, you for, you know, helping us uh, yeah. siphon through it and for uh, going head to head. Thank, Thank you, Lauren. Much. Thanks. That's it for tonight's show. Thanks for tuning in, and make sure to come back tomorrow. We'll discuss green jobs versus real jobs. The Obama administration's touting green jobs as the future of America, but some critics say that the only ones that benefit are big cities and those who live on the coasts. 
So are the costs for the are the costs for middle right now too high to be thinking about the future? In the meantime, don't forget to become a fan of the Alona Show on Facebook and to follow us on Twitter. If you miss any of tonight's show or any other nights, you can catch them at the Alona Show YouTube channel. Coming up next is the news with all the latest headlines from both the U.S. and around the world. Thanks for joining us. I'm Lauren Lister in for Alona, who is under the weather today. We hope she feels better and that she'll be back tomorrow.